So oh. the next speaker is Eric Binke. He doesn't need an introduction and he's going to speak about IPv6 deployment monitoring, internet metrics. I personally like to um, thank Eric for coming. And truth be told, uh, there was at least some people that mentioned that they wouldn't be present at this meeting because they were vendors. So I think he was one of the few guys that being a vendor got involved into the meeting. And I think that's, that's really valuable and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Let's go. Um, forward. Um, measuring the internet and IPv6 has been done by many, many people, right? I mean, there are at least, beside me, two other people in the room doing it, and maybe more. Or, and there are IPC here, so forgetting about it. Many, many more people. Uh, I have selected a few of them just to show, because getting measurement is easy. Right? You can measure, you write Python, in my case PHP or Perl, and then you get numbers. But what do you do with the numbers? And we are an engineer, right? We know how to make numbers lie. Right? Pretty much like people in the bank industry, they can make numbers lie as well. Anyway, graphics, I just spent a couple, um, couple of minutes this morning to, to grab them for this morning. But the real question, right? the 1,000 euros question, and there is the same thing in French, I don't know whether it's really English, but anyway. Auto monitor deployment. Some people are doing, basically, trying to get at the future. And RIPE, for instance, I think is subsidizing, a, a, is funding a study asking service providers, what are your intent within six months, one year? Just looking for future, okay? It's done by interviews. Or, you can try what we call precursor. It's pretty much like FBI and other police agencies are trying to find drug dealers because they know if you want to make heroines, you need this and this chemical. So if you buy those chemicals, something is wrong. You can use this in a positive way. If somebody goes to RIPE and asks for a prefix, most probably at some point of time, it will deploy V6. Okay, that's what I call precursor here. Or you can simply look at the current state of the internet. And it's very easy. Uh, all the things I've done, I've done it basically outside of Cisco, so no access to anything there. Um, open matrix, the trace route, the pings, the DNS. The good thing, anybody can run those tests. Okay? Anybody in this room and worldwide can do those tests. Because it's public data. So we get a worldwide view. Anyone can check this. No need to believe somebody else. So, first measure, try to measure the ISP deployment. Source of data, RIPE, and his sister, and then brothers. And basically to see all the prefixes. You can as well, next step, once you got the prefix, you can get access to the BGP route and see whether the prefix is unknown, yes or no. Very easy again. The other part, which is much more trickier, and I found this pretty, I I'm really sorry to say, and if there is any people from IX or NRNs here in the room, make your number a bit more public. Okay, we got access to the routing tables, to the registries, but access to real data, exchange, an exchange point, including more detail of what's happening there, we do not have. And you, and those people know what's happening on the internet. And there's really the black box. So you know this graph coming basically from RIPE, where we see, in this case, I selected a couple of region, and basically the numbers of prefix being allocated there. Okay? It's nice to see a nice trend. Um, you can public this on the map, and the greener you are, the better you are. Okay? Again, kind of easy. Yeah. When I updated this morning, I, I kept the slide from a previous presentation, right? Europe has not conquered the complete world, uh, as far as I know. Um, but basically, uh, you can see it. Now, the thing is that how do you call those prefixes, though? Seems easy, right? Look at the routing table or type or Erin, count the prefixes. But if you compare, for instance, the prefixes, I'm coming from Belgium, right? To be expected, then the numbers of prefixes in Belgium is more than the numbers of prefixes of Russia of US, right? So, one easy way to count them is basically m compare the ratio of IPv4 and IPv6 prefixes. Okay? But then you end up in a very small country, I forgot the name, there's an island in the Baltic Sea. 
that basically has one IPv4 prefix. So when you got this one IPv6 prefix, is the winner. 100%, which is not good, right? Um, and for US, it's much more complex because they are having many, many AS, the beginning of the internet, that has been merged, right? And those ASs, the, when they move to V6, they only require one or two prefixes. So, you, you know, that's when I start to say, when you see numbers like this, it looks nice, but we are engineers. So put your glasses, right, to remove your reading glasses and put criticism glasses, right? You need to pay attention there. Or you can see what are the subscribers. So we look at the network, we can have a look at the subscribers, the users. And basically there are a couple of ways of measuring it. And in Lorenzo noted by from the top of his heart, of course, measure the web traffic, and I shall come back on this, simply by inserting web bugs in some web page. That's a bias, of course. People need to go to your web page. I was doing the same thing on my website, right? But my website is mainly, I mean, visited by IPv6 people. So guess what, right? We get more IPv6 hit rate than, than Google or others. Um, we got some numbers from Cisco.com, and guess what? The average visitors, numbers of visitors Cisco.com is slightly higher than the average because networking people, of course, is more often IPv6. So you get the point, right? Uh, you can as well look into the web server logs, um, but then it's a little bit annoying because you cannot correlate the v4 and the v6. While when you do this trick, basically, you can request into the small web bug to be actually downloading three of them. One which is v4 only, one which is v6 only, one which is dual stack. Right? And you can edit something like a unique ID, and then you can make some stats. Google Ads, this has been used by APNIC and some people at v6lab at cisco.com, where basically that's an ad, which is in the flow of the old Google Ads, so presented from time to time um, to people, and then there's a flash you know, to display a nice animation and blah, blah, but this flash can also request three URLs, v4 only, v6 only, dual stack, also with a unique ID. Right? And then when you analyze the server lock, you can see what's happening there. Okay? So pretty good as well. Um, typically, you make your ads ugly because you don't want people to click on it because you pay for it, right? Uh, sorry, for the Google people in the room. <laughs> you need to be paid for sure, but by people, not us. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so uh, more on the work back. I uh, already explained this. So, Basically, one way, it was very important, if you remember, two, three years ago, when the major hurdle to deploy V6 on the CPE to service providers and to content provider mainly, was the 624 brokenness. CPE believing they've got uh, a piece of connectivity because they got the 624 and it was broken later. So it was really important, and Tori Anderson made basically this idea of using those three bugs V4 only, V6 only, and dual stack to measure the brokenness. And he's measuring down. Um, so that's pretty cool. We are happy there. It's, I mean, this IPv6 brokenness now is mostly gone away. But you can also do more tricks. And that's what notably testipv6.com is doing, is that when you have V4 and V6, and you know the V4 address and the V6 address of the person, they should, if they're native, Right? They should come from the same AS. If one is coming from Hurricane Electric and one, let's say, from Deutsche Telekom, you're pretty sure it's using a tunnel. Okay? So you can see as well the numbers of things there. And also, based on the V6 address, you can also de de uh, detect whether it's using 6RD, for instance, or other tricks. Um, oh, of course, don't do it on every page if you're a major website, right? It will kill yourself. So that's what I call the mother of all deployment measure. That's the famous Google stats. Um, we all know it's going up, 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 and up. Um, and it's doubling every nine months, the last time I, I checked it, so pretty cool. Why they do not present it on a timeline? Okay, so there's very... doing it. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so basically what I was doing is getting all those data since, since ever. So it's, I think, 2011 you started to, to announce it per country. 
And you can take some graph like this. So I put a couple of countries here. Uh, this one must be France, which was with thanks to free, but thanks to only to free, 5%. You all know that somewhere a big surprise was Romania last year, around Easter. One major ISP, and then gone. Now, I still wonder why it's going so unstable there. Um, different story. But you see basically a couple of deployment plans, and that's, I think, find interesting. And on the purple lines here, that's US, right? 3%. Very slow, right? But regular. My understanding, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, they need to change and update your CPE. And so they are, when they're replacing the CPE by a new one, um, simply said it. We see the same thing, and there I'm sure of what I'm talking about in Luxembourg. Same thing. They need to replace the CPE. As soon as they replace the CPE, bingo, they got V6. Or if you look on this one, which color is the light purple, that's Belgium, right? That's where I'm coming from. So that's a basically a cable provider. They deployed, they did it the other way. They replaced all the cable modem, that's easy, to get Doxys to 3.0. And on the one day, they enabled one CMTS, or cable addend, in one province, which was mine. I was quite happy. Bingo, we went to 1%. And then it was stable for two months. Basically, they were testing it. And then bingo, they enabled it again, and they are about 3%. Now, you see Belgium is keeping increasing. Okay, And you need to go back to another source of measurement, which is APNIC. And APNIC is giving you not per country, but per AS. So you know which ISPs is deploying it. And then you notice that there's a one cable provider in Belgium. You know, Belgium is mostly split into, into countries. It's one the one from the French-speaking part of Belgium. The Flemish-speaking part of Belgium is also now deploying it, but on a very pilot base. So user by user. And you see this increase, I think, is mainly this. And the, the other part is Megacom, which is the incumbent in Belgium, where they need to replace the CPE to do this. And that's why you see this. Okay? So based on the curve, you can detect somehow the deployment of what people are doing there. Anyway, so the other part, we look about the network in the middle. We look at the users. What about the content, which was a big point a couple of times ago? This one is simple and easy. Very, very simple and easy, right? Um, if you want to check whether the website is enabled, you go, you connect simply to the website. Okay, you make a, a quad A, and if the address looks correct, because honestly, anyone which has done this exercise, you get a lot of link local, colon, colon one, okay, or whenever addresses that obviously do not work. Uh, and then you try to connect on port 80 and grab a page. Right? Connection is not enough. You need to grab a page. But it's not enough. You may want to go, remember the precursor I was talking about? Every website that I know never went just in one step. For a while at least, they enable a test version, something like WW6 or IPv6 something, right? To test and see on with friendly pilot users. So basically, as soon as you get a fully qualified domain name, you test with those prefixes and you see what's happening there. That's what I call test mode. Um, and then you can easily find the DNS as well for the MX records and DNS records and see, and you can try to connect there, whether it's work. OK, everybody doing this is using Alexa. Alexa, I think it's related to Amazon, uh, tests the list of all the websites by popularity. So some people, some users, and I've done it on my home, um, uh, installing a plugin for Alexa that gives you something in advantage, but also give you which website you have visited there. So, what you can have freely is a top one million website. That's it, right? Big Excel file. So now you can say, hey, it's easy, right? Specifically for us in Europe, everything which terminated by .be is from Belgium, .ch is Switzerland, .lu is Luxembourg. Easy. Right? Yes and no. Swatch.com, for instance, that's a brand of watch. That's a com, but it's, it's Belgium. It's even, the website is, the company is in Belgium, and the website is in even Belgium. YouTube.be, 
guess what? That's Google, right? And as far as I know, right, there's a data center of Google in Belgium, but I will not qualify this as a Belgian website. Right? That doesn't belong to a Belgian company. So, not easy at all. Right? And for instance, for all the U most of the US companies are .com, but obviously, a dot all the .coms are not US. So for all the .com, when I was doing this test, I'm still doing it, I need to go to WIS and see in which country this website is located. So it's uh, quite painful. And the same thing for .tv, .cd, and blah, blah, right? As you can guess, they are not real websites on those islands there. So with this, this gives you the IPv6 readiness of a country. How many websites is there in a country? But if you pay Alexa, you can get a different list. This is sorted by country now. And it says, for instance, in Germany, the first website visited by German user is this. Let's say Facebook, most probably, or Google, or Wikipedia. Number two is this one, number three is this one, and so on. Right? So when you look about numbers of websites and countries, is it websites located in the country? or website belonging to companies of the country, or website visited by users in this country, right? So you have only three points of view, three ways of measuring this. So if you look, and that's basically what I'm doing, I'm counting, this is the, the top for all the countries, right? That's easy because obviously there is no website as far as I know on ISS or on the moon, so that's on the Earth. Um, easy to, to, to count. You see immediately World V6 Day, and the World V6 launch. Okay. If you wonder why it's going up and down like this, my best explanation, because that's on the top 100, the top 100 is changing, of course. If there is a major incident, a major war, or whatever, you can expect that BBC, CNN is going up. When the Olympics are there, you can expect the Olympics games is in the top 100. Okay? So the top 100 is changing daily, So which is the reason why that they are going up and down there, my explanation at least. So now, if you look at country, servers located in the country, um, you see this morning was Czech Republic and Slovenia, thanks to, to Jan, and I know you don't like to get Brazil at the top of you, because they're kind of cheating. Oh, the, the thing is That's that, cheap. they're honestly, there's a kind of cheating, uh, <laughs> because Alexa is putting multiple websites, blah, blah, dot, food.br, blah, blah, dot food.br, uh, and so on. And they are counted as three. And obviously, at the same company. So that's kind of cheating there. But you know, Nancy, and what I was talking about, the Maldives, right? In the top one million websites of Alexa, they have only 11. Okay? But three of them are reachable over PV6. That's one third. Right? So, and coming from a small country like Belgium, right? 10 million people. I do not feel fair to discard all small countries. Okay? That's my bias. So I want to keep those there. Did, Again, right? Did so you introduce the waiting? No. Discuss that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sure. Yeah. Um, but the waiting, I should come back on this, is, is um, happening in some, another place. So that's basically the map, and you see Czech Republic, Slovenia, and a few others. Now, if you look about, as I said, Alexa, you can also get, in Germany, they are visiting this and this and this and this website. So what you can try to do is to put a distribution. If you assume, for instance, the first website, okay, counting in numbers of visitors per day, so it's not about it, it's not about megabytes or whatever. Okay? There's only so many people visiting this website per day. Then you can say, number one, 10% is receiving 10% of the traffic. Number two, maybe it's nine, right? And you make a curve like this. Okay, so for the one and top 100%, you make a tail. Okay, then you do the math. If number one is V6, it got 10%. Number two, 9%, no IPv6 doesn't get 9%, okay? That's basically what 6LAP is doing. And then it's, um, that's all three are there, right? Uh, anyway, the, the country in green is higher. That's basically the potential IPv6 traffic that is Poland. No, 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 Poland is not there, right? 
that's Czech Republic. Oh, Czech Repu yeah, Czech Republic. Sorry. So Czech Republic. If all the ISPs were IPv6, all the CP, all the there would be the country with the highest IPv6 traffic. Okay. For instance, you see countries like maybe uh, North Africa, right? I can bet they have nearly no IPv6 traffic. But if all the ISPs were moving to v6, right, and blah, 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 you will see a lot of traffic over there. Okay. So if there is no sample, there is no country? If there is no sample, there is no country, yes. Okay. And so it basically, don't forget, right, that's coming from Alexa. So obviously, they only do it when they see meaningful traffic and people where they would like to sell this. So the poor countries are not there. The issue with Africa is that they have most of their content hosted outside the country. Oh, yeah, yeah. But again, that's for the visited, right? So, so for instance, talking to you, Tanzania is one of the biggest countries with the most IPv6 content. Simply because I guess that they have no local website, they always go to the Facebook and the Google and the Yahoo of the world, right? So now talking about the same thing for the email servers, you see this and a big surge there. So do you know the date of this? Six, six. No. Eric and Lorenzo knows probably. It's August somewhere in 2012. That's when Gmail and all the affiliates yeah, we email. <laughs> right. This is August, right? A month or two later. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, you've seen a major improvement, right? Um, that's amazing. And, and that's my point, I think. It's basically you can do a lot of... Yeah, I will finish quickly. Okay, BitTorrent. That's something I've done as well, presented the ITF about um, one year or two years ago. BitTorrent is the UI stack for many, many years. Okay, a lot of students are doing IPv6 and BitTorrent. And BitTorrent, even if the tracker, you know, where, where you are downloading the file, you download first a torrent from a tracker with all the peers, not all trackers support v6, but when they do download peers and you start talking to other peers with IPv4, okay, you can do what they call private exchange. So you exchange the peers that you know with your peers, with all the tracker. This support IPv6. And then you simply you can try to connect to them. So uh, I have running for a couple of times every three months or something, a dummy IPv6 BitTorrent client, but your stack and counting the v6 address. I download nothing and I upload nothing. I pretend to have all the required file, but I don't load, do not download them. And basically, you can get some numbers, right? Uh, Romania, for instance, show up quickly, and you see as well China. And China, you don't see it other way, because in, for instance, I think if you rely, uh, again, sorry to, to sign Google, but you were the one of the first to, to publish those numbers, I'm pretty sure that they go to Beidou, right? And not to go to Google. Same thing for Russia. So, I mean, Google is not the, the search engine everywhere. Uh, some numbers here, but to go, if you want. We don't really care. Okay. So what you can try to do, and some people like it, some people do not like it. It's really up to you. Um, so many metrics. What about trying to get the real metrics? Right, mixing all those metrics and making a big recipe out of it. So that's what Six Lab at Cisco is doing, um, and there are some students. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. The guy raising his hand is the guy doing it, um, and he scratched his head and he put mathematical formulas on the web page, which is there. Um, I try to present the formula in a simpler, clear term. Um, it's basically giving a score from 0 to 100, where the percentage of um, AS having V6 compared to V4 account for 25%. Then it's making the, the geographic mean between the content, right, that per, visit per country, and the user based on Google. And it accounts for 25%. And based on this, is doing a ranking. Okay, the, the best one received 10 points, and the last one received 0 points, and they make a, uh, something like a mean on this. And you can get this kind of thing now, which is, I think, make a little bit more sensible because it's the mix of multiple metrics. And 
I don't think I've seen it, but Peru is becoming very active regarding V6 recently. Again, very smooth uh, and linear growth. And some numbers here that we don't really care. Okay, oh, IXP. You, if you're on Facebook on the IPv6 webpage, you've seen people at um, I'm six, hey, big traffic increase since Friday. And Friday was my birthday. I said, yeah, cool, right? They enabled this, some big application for my birthday. Now you go to DKX, and basically, they're not really fit, right? Because it's a, a drop of traffic one day before, but you see decrease. So my assumption is that the traffic has increased a lot. It simply moved from DKX um, to I'm six. And that's it. Um, this is the growth jury, and then you can, know you can go to Akamai, and Akamai shows you also a growth that all we know. Um, put it there for your reference, all the pointers. I mean, I invented nothing here. Most of you know Apifu and Apivi Fox, and that's it. Uh, time is really running out. Um, don't forget this, right? Measuring is easy if you have access to the data. Um, knowing what to measure and basically even further out to predict what you are measuring is really, really tricky. Okay. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball and I don't think a lot of us has a crystal ball. The only thing is that it's positive, right? The growth is positive, the derivative is positive, and I think the second derivative is also positive. So we are on our way. <laughs>